Now entering the Bitcoin Podcast Network. Welcome to episode 273 yes. of the Bitcoin podcast. What? Yes, 273. Yeah, 273 <laughs> of the Bitcoin podcast. I'm the host that talks first, D. And I'm the other one, Dr. Corey Petty. What's up, everybody? Today, we have brought on Michael, a.k.a. in the crypto realm, slash cypherpunk realm slash the internet exiled surfer what's up michael how you doing hey guys man great to join you love doing this stuff with you guys 273 man that's, that's just 200... one show <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah, two, 273 that's an amazing number really man the more amazing number is 763 which is all the shows i think that the all is the shows together with, with, the, with the good hosts you know, yeah, I'm the good content. This is <laughs> this is like the childish content room, right? Yeah, this is the um. No, this is the flagship. This is uh the show that started it all, and we just kind of we have good conversations, and we're gonna start one of those today. So I read uh, it. Do, in- do, do you do you do you remember what your first conversation was? Our very first one. Yeah, on can you remember it? Yeah. One? Are you, are one you rolling you that cigarette on the microphone? He is. I thought he was rolling a J. I was like, oh, it's going to be that kind of show. All right. <laughs> no, 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 man. I, I'm bald like Joe Rogan, but, you know, we're not going to be smoking joints on air. <laughs> I was I was okay with that. I was like, oh, shit, it's a Sunday morning. Let's just make it happen, Kevin. Wake um, and bake. That's on WFMU. <laughs> what um? What did we talk about, Corey? When? Oh, your microphone the is hitting your first, zipper, Michael. The very first episode. So oh, I, I, I have no idea. If you go back and listen to the very first episode, it's it's so terrible because <laughs> we didn't know what we were doing at all. We just we were just like, hey, we're starting a podcast. All right, um, how do we record things? And we yeah, kind of figured that out terribly. We all had bad mics. If anything, if if any mics at all, it's just laptop mics probably. And then, and then like, all right, we got a recording. How do we edit things? It's like where do we get sound? The only thing that looked yeah. good was all the was all the graphics because Jello was a graphic designer. We talked about the bear market, the banking process, and the influence of presentation and adoption. That sounds good. And then there's a quote here: "Money is a collective agreement. If enough people come to the same agreement, what they agree upon becomes secondary." What? Look at us all fucking prophetic. Can you say that again? Money is a collective agreement. Yes. If enough people come to the same agreement, what they agree upon becomes secondary. And that's why we have like 1,700 shit coins. Well, those yeah. are, would you call them money? They want to I wouldn't money. call them money. I'd call them, sc- ah, I'd call them shit. That's what I'd call them. Not, not scams, but I'd call them shit. Thank you for not saying that word. Yeah, man, it's a sensitive word. It's a sensitive word around these parts. I understand that, Corey. Do you guys do you guys catch the uh, so the uh, sort of like discussion debate a fight that I was having between Udi Vetheima and uh, and John Lilich? I don't know, you know who any consensus? of those people are. Oh, no. Okay, John Lilich is is he still at consensus? I thought he left. Oh, I know John Lilich. That's right. I know John. I didn't go on though. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, basically, uh, John was had had uh, was calling. Udi Vetheimer out as a scam coiner for having worked on uh, when he was early in the space, having worked as writing some code for 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 a coin that later on went on to launch and everything. And 
and was saying that, you know, him and all the founders benefit from it. And then it's just like, and it's not, not really uh, representative of the facts, but because of this, uh, Udi Vedheimer had been, um, had been, you know, calling John Lillard shitcoin John. And it was just one of those, uh, it, I mean, for years this has been going on. And it was just one of those threads in my timeline that I was trying to moderate and just get people, get people to stay away from the ad hominem of attacking each other personally because of differences in technical opinion or differences in consensus rules or just differences in, you know, whichever coin it is that they want to support. But uh, so, so actually, I really don't like the name shitcoin uh, is, is my point. Yeah. I, I think that I think that uh, you know forking and experimenting and everything is is a feature and not a bug and I and I hate to see the outright scams but you know a huge amount of people have been trying to to build different consensus rules that they can build community around and, and eventually have a network effect and 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 I think it's a pretty exciting ecosystem that Bitcoin has has spawned as a result of that all of these experiments happening out of the state outside of the state. Um, realm and this these sort of things used to happen only in ivory towers and universities and research centers and and everything and so i i, I love all of this chaos actually caveat cryptor is my point so here's the here's the question because i agree with everything you just said i love the experimentation i love the fact that we can experiment and anyone can do it and then build a community around it and see how well it works in terms of um what d basically said how can you get a group of people to agree on something and then call it value um, but how where's, where's the caveat in there? <laughs> realistically, what percentage of people do you think are actually doing that in a in a like in a truthful way versus just trying to take yeah. advantage of a group of people using it as money? No, like how many people are building something, actually trying to experiment something, and being honest about building a community and, and, and hoping that it works versus trying to take advantage of a hype for personal gain. Actually, you guys see that bird trying to get laid outside one of you guys' window? Who? Not, There's no window. I not hear of that bird. Oh, that's me. If you can hear a bird, that's definitely me. That bird is trying to get it in. I it is windows. yelling at some other bird across. That is loud as I hell. I live in the woods okay. and I got windows open. Okay. I hope oh, it doesn't give, come give out a sec. I'll go close them. I'll keep going. <laughs> All right. Um, Can I answer that question? Actually? Go for it. Um, I mean, it's kind of hard to get to, to have an overview now. That's that's what's really so stunning about the branch. I mean, as it grew, you know, year on year, I mean, everybody came along and the, the first the first forks of Bitcoin, uh, you know, the whole period, master coin starting and colored coins and and uh, all of those things that were were early Litecoin. Dash going off and doing their thing. I mean, up until the point of Ethereum, it was pretty, it was pretty easy to to have an overview about everything that went on. And maybe let's say a year after Ethereum came along, but now it's just like you really can't have a have an overview over the whole segment. It's, it's pretty close to impossible. But I would say over the course of my experience uh, of of these of these past ten years, um, and also now working for the last three years in in in, in Ethereum rather than in Bitcoin that uh, the percentages of people who actually are trying to do this, that are experimenting for, for positive reasons and trying to build communities around them is, is I would say it's 70%. And I think that 30% are the pure scams. And that those 30% that are the pure scams, okay, and I would even go back and say, I would say 20% of the 70, you know, is maybe questionable. And there are, you know, pretty high financial motivations with the people that are doing it. But I think that the the percentage of people that are working in the cryptocurrency sector with all experimenting on all of these all of these uh, sets of consensus rules is far higher than 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 most people would think because we get so much noise around all of the scams because people are so vocal about it. But so yeah. that that's my take on it. I don't know how do you feel the, about that, Corey? The tough thing is that the, like the thirty percent that is scammerific. Are, is, is 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 the leading foot that people see when they get into the space why and, and most people what do you mean why because those that, that gets the headlines that gets the it's news that gets the it's loud it's like oh here's some it's exchange the majority of their stole, budgets on marketing and not technology yeah is, some exchange just sold 14 million dollars in bitcoin okay well that's going to be an article or uh poke bowl 
po- Pokeball token was a complete outright. People sent all their money in there and then they just took it. <laughs> like people see stuff like that. And that thing is, is that if this is trying to become an industry or trying to become money, whatever we're trying to do with this is that those things always make us take 20 steps back as we're like at a rate where we're taking one step forward like every other year. And it's very tough on the outside looking in because anybody who approaches me about crypto, once they figure out what I do as the side gig here with this network, they're always like, they think like, isn't it such a scam though? Like what is like, wasn't, they always have a thousand questions about what it does wrong and no questions about what it does right. I would say, I would say yes, and it'll continue that way, but real adoption isn't, um, people understanding Bitcoin and blockchain and so on and so forth. It's them using new applications that Bitcoin and blockchain and whatever yeah. and so forth enable. I mean, people don't know how quantum mechanics works. People don't know how, but they use their cell phones. People say dumb shit about quantum mechanics all the time. And they hear yeah. articles on how it, it, it allows you to, uh, create the reality that you want in front of you if you just think about it or all the weird what? shit Deepak Chopra says. Like, I don't know. I think it's a little bit more pedestrian than that. I don't think most people don't even know how a fuel injection engine works. Yeah, so There's I mean. quantum mechanics in my cell phone? Yeah, that's how most electronics work. Uh, at least some principles based on... You blow them my anyway, mind. None of that matters. No one understands how shit works. And But their life is changed by based on the technology that that shit enables. And that's, that's, that's an, that's it. Like, but we're at a point now where all we can really so, talk about is the basic technology because there's nothing built on top of it that people can use yet. So that puts us in a dangerous game though, Corey, because if we're always going to be that, what you just said is like a natural, it should be a natural law. It should be written in a textbook somewhere. People don't give a shit about what they use as long as it works. I don't so you know. said it, you said it to me just the other day and I tweeted it. People don't give a shit if you can show your work. Like, yeah, that's, that's very true. They don't give a shit in the real world. Let me show. Let me show you my work. I don't want to see that shit. Just give me. Just give me the answer. But I think that like that's the dangerous game we play in crypto. Is that there's always going to be the masses that don't understand how something works, but they use it because it makes their life better. But since what we're dealing with is innately financial. It's dangerous, right? Because if they have no clue what's going on under the hood, then on the outside of the hood, we could literally say whatever we want. And we could be Superman toing the entire population, just taking off fractions of their wealth and taking off You're gonna all this stuff. Break that break that analogy down for me. I don't, I don't think I ever saw Superman 2. You never saw Superman 2? Where no. Lex Luthor wanted to like take a thousandth of a penny of every transaction that everyone did and he was going to get rich. What an appropriate and then Superman, analogy. <laughs> Yeah, and then <laughs> Superman busted and was like, "I know computer science, Lex Luthor. You're not doing that." And Lex Luthor was like, "How the fuck do you know computer science now?" He's like, "Cause it's Superman." That's pretty much the whole movie. You go. You don't need to watch it anymore. You should. You should do a whole podcast just on like <laughs> ten second movies. Super, superhero crypto. <laughs> ten second movie movie overviews. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> man you guys are over there on the east coast drinking coffee and i'm over here drinking you know you know wine with sparkling water here it's the evening man don't worry once don't i finish worry. this coffee i'm gonna switch right back over to beer mm. it's, yes, like yeah, it's my birthday a, weekend I, I have a little bit different <laughs> uh i have a little different uh opinion about about all of this stuff happening in the space that you guys are criticizing um see i don't really think that that's uh I don't think that's the the serious game in crypto that you know consumer facing and and retail facing uh things at this point. I think we're way 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 too early about that. We're you know 10 20 years out from it actually being relevant on a on a on a consumer level. I would agree. Um I think that the I think that the the real play here is is that the systems that we're building or at least this proof of concept that we call Bitcoin and then this other experiment that we call Ethereum you know, agreed upon state for running applications, running scripts and whatever. I think that these are the systems that are basically going to save the state and save corporations. Um, I don't, I'm not, I've never been a proponent of, of replace the state. I'm, I've been a proponent of reform the state and reform corporations. 
And so the real play here is, is that when, you know, okay, obviously now we have, we have Libra coin, other corporate coins, we have stable coin plays, we have sovereign coins coming around. And, and now with the uh, digital currency that's, that's happening and that the China is now announcing is the most important thing here is public private uh, key pair technology and how this is actually going to be the basis of, of moving forward so that institutions can actually function. And we need all of this stuff to basically be co-opted and implemented in various forms across existing institutions and existing, um, existing economic structures before it even becomes relevant for consumers. I would and agree so with I that. Think that. And I th so I think the conversation needs to circulate far more around that and less around all of the consumer facing stuff and people are getting taken on a scam coin. It's just sort of like collateral damage. Well, that's the, that's the issue though, right? Like because they are the loudest and they're the ones that people, they could potentially with the massive marketing budget and lack of technology, they could end up becoming quite large yeah. in, a, in a significant portion of that infrastructure when it, it, which is a, which is an issue because that infrastructure won't be built correctly we have to make sure that like that, like we use the systems that are permissionless and trustless so that when you actually build the things on top of them they they don't rely on basically a, a, a financial backdoor so i have two two thing two answers to that first one is uh i'm gonna ask you a question uh wh what company does lose weight now ask me how uh, represent. Who's weight now? Ask me how. Yeah. I have no idea. Herbalife. Okay, that makes sense. And Herbalife is what? A criminal enterprise that is now, uh, that was a Ponzi scheme that is now a legitimate American company. Okay. And so the first part of my answer is, is that there's always going to be ways that people are doing you know, who are, who are taking advantage of social capital and trust to involve people in multi-level marketing uh, scams or pyramid schemes where yeah. money is being exchanged, okay? It, we're never going to, we're never going to get around that, you know? Yeah, but if you're um, having states and, and you're, and you're, and you're, you're saving the government and saving, saving these, these, these corporations, the massive ones by having, by rebuilding this infrastructure fairly, then you, I mean, you got to make sure that so here's my answer to that. Here's my answer to that. It's it's it's. I think that at some point, that it's in, that it's in states' interest to essentially. So Bitcoin is the standard, right? Everybody's trying to do everything else, and it, 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 anything no. that isn't as good as Bitcoin fails the test, right? We have ten years of a of a of of no downtime in a network that has got incredible security, and so that's the standard right now. So I would envision that at some point. When the adults are in the room and when the shit really, really hits the fan and it's really, really existential and all of these derivatives crash and all of the all of the currency plays crash and all, I mean, all this stuff that we we see as being inevitable and that most people think is going to lead to hyper Bitcoinization, which I don't think is going to happen. At some point, people are going to recognize that the model that exists is the best model for states to use for a global uh, system of exchange. And I don't think it will be Bitcoin. I think it will be that the large economic players will say, we're going to agree to trustlessly trust each other in this game theoretical economic system where it is that we have um, a, a known emission rate, you know, a hard money emission rate. I think that's a, inevitably going to come. It may not come as fast as we, we would like it. And I don't think, and, and, it, and like I say, I don't think it's going to be Bitcoin, but I would, I would assume that that the efficiency that we see that that Bitcoin offers will eventually be in the self-interest of states and corporations to adapt for themselves, literally one to one. Why don't you think um, it's going to be Bitcoin? Um, because I because I don't think that people are ever going to be able to get their heads around the fact that 18 million of the coins are already out there and that there's only that there's only three million left, even though that we have infinite divisibility. We're now at 10 years and people are just starting to talk about stacking sats. I don't know why it is that any of the exchanges are are quoting, um, you know, Bitcoin at ten thousand eight hundred and fifty uh, dollars. It should be already. We should be at the point where the Bitcoin price is being measured in Sats, because this still is like part of the thing of like, okay, it's just this like casino where I get rich on and look at I'm comparing I'm comparing my value 
uh, value to fiat. We haven't even made that transition uh, ourselves to start talking about the exchange rate being one of the divisible things. Because in the future, theoretically, if, if Bitcoin was supposed to suck in all the trillions of dollars of wealth and become this closed system where, the, where all of the world's economy operates in, we're going to have to be increasing decimals. And we're not even, 10 years in, we're not even really quoting the Bitcoin price at, you know, at a decimal name. You know? That's, a, so that's an innately that, human thing, though. Like, people don't like... Yeah. People don't like um, so there was two points there yeah. why I think it's not going to... I don't think it's going to be Bitcoin. I don't think that people are ever going to get their heads around that, uh, the, the, the remaining uh, emission. And, um, and um, yeah, I think that the, I think that the, how many, how many, how many lost coins do we have now? Is it five to five million? I don't know half, off the top of my million, head. Including, including, let, well, let's just, let's just say it's five. Let's just <laughs> say it's five, right? So here's another Michael prediction. I think the most likely thing about all of the lost coins through the early years of Bitcoin and the unmoved Satoshi coins um, is that at some point we're going to see a request for, uh, for a soft fork to redistribute those coins as mining reward. You think so? You think something's going to happen with those coins? I think that at some point people are not going to accept the fact that people will accept a 21 million hard cap, but they won't accept 5 million or 6 million coins that we know to be dead people will start and there will be a consensus to repurpose those coins. I think that that's uh, to continue the mining emission because I don't know how the fee market's really actually going to develop. And I think that that's the hardest problem in terms of, you know, uh, Bitcoin sucking in all of the world's wealth and being the single, uh, a single, you know, global currency for all transactions and whatever. I think that's another one of the problems. So you said that, like, you think that, the world will come to an agreement in terms of building something like Bitcoin. It's not going to be Bitcoin, but in my opinion, like they're not going to build something new. They're going to pick something that exists and use that. Well, that's what I mean. It will. I'm saying they would take Bitcoin and start it from square one with a new emission. I I don't think that. I mean, why not? I don't know. I guess that there would have to be some type of survey. There's too many opinions on. Um, Forget what Bitcoiners think. I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't care. I'm, I'm talking about yeah. like the logistics of doing this and like how how interested There's parties the work. Like you they're start, gonna you start you start a new you just start a new Genesis block. Yeah, I don't think and that would you, work because there's there's I think people would choose something at least because there's a, a massive lack of understanding on how this stuff works. They would choose something that already has some type of value associated with it. Um, they're not going to try and make value out of nothing on a global scale. I, I think an, an, an individual country will do that. I think that's exactly that. what it is that they would do. Yeah? Actually. Yeah, because that's what it is that we do now. I think yeah, because it's too they, easy to do because agreed. Well, well, what Why not try well, to start from scratch? What they would agree to do would be on some sort of long-term monetary policy that was anchored in a blockchain-based emission schedule. It just seems the most logical outcome to me. I personally, and I'm not, and and I'm not really, and I'm not being dogmatic or pedantic about this. I'm really sort of like, you know, when I sit here at home and watch everything that's going past in the crypto world on Twitter or at the conferences that I'm at, and watch listening to podcasts and reading stuff, and just sitting here alone with myself in the hours when I'm not masturbating or in the garden, it just it's it's <laughs> what is it, like an hour a day, <laughs> fifteen <laughs> minutes, yeah. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> um, it, it just it it's always keeps coming back to me as the ambient uh, logical. See, I think they're going to choose something like 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 Libra, to be honest, because they don't understand. It's a it's a globally distributed well, kind of. Oh, we're going to you know. go through those experiences. Uh, we're going to go through those experiments. We're already so the first thing that's going to be happening are what you know purely digital currencies that you know have a that that have a an open ledger so that you can. You know, basically track everything, and they're going to be sovereign, sovereign digital currencies, but not cryptocurrencies. They may have public-private key pair, you know, a tech built into it. But what it is that we're calling a cryptocurrency is something which has a which has a distributed trustless uh, trustlessness set, right? I mean, where where essentially the people that are mining and participating in the system don't trust each other, and I think that states don't trust each other, but they do have an economic interest to to. For, for global trade to be less friction once we get past this terraform bullshit that's you know 
going to come crashing down around our heads in the next, you know, three, five years. So, I, so again, it, you know, at which time rate are we talking about here? You know, I'm, I'm looking forward, you know, 10, 20, 30 years. I missed a little bit of this conversation. What did I miss? We can't re- 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 rewind that back. We're talking about whether or not um, when the government, the governments, the world, the, the, yeah. the people who make these decisions uh, mm-hmm. come together on a new money – when the inevitability of all this stuff coming crashing down happens, what are with they going to choose? With a predictable monetary, with a predictable monetary policy. He thinks there needs to be a predictable well, monetary policy, like Bitcoin has, so we understand how many bitcoins will be put into circulation. Can't do anything about that, other than have a hard fork, and then you have a whole different decision on agreement whether which one's the right one. What, what what's the world going to do? Are they going to are they going to like start fresh with like a brand new? Bitcoin clone? Are they gonna or are they gonna take something mm-hmm. that currently exists and say, let's just use this because it's working? You know, there's a three letter word that determines what the next money's gonna be. God. No. Nah. I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> war. W A R war. If there's so? not one of those, there won't be. You don't think if so? there is one, there will be. If there is one, I hope it's not a big one. Explain. I hope it's like what do you mean? Like after the Revolutionary War, we had our own money. We we made a new money, like those Confederate dollars or whatever those fucking napkins were that people were handing out. <laughs> okay, and then <laughs> there's like after every war, there's a new money. After World War II, we had all the gold, and we were like, "Hey guys, remember? I, I know y'all were fighting over there, and it sucked, but we got all your gold, and so that's going to be the standard for a while, right? Like there's there's some kind of war." Or some kind of geopolitical disagreement that's massive that sparks this, a new money. Yeah, how typically. about like something like, I mean, Brexit could be a start to this, depending on how things react to it and how well Britain does. Like, yeah. I, mean, I think things like that could be a catalyst to start. Yeah. But the war won't. I, I don't think whatever war here's comes the thing. isn't going to be all here's out thing, though. violence. It's going to be it, something like socioeconomic and monetary policy well, war. I think it'll be a digital. War, like there's a war being fought right now. Like as we're gonna tell me, I mean, yeah, of course you know it. I mean, we know it because we're not like so locked into the Kardashians that we don't understand that like every single day we're attacking Russia and China digitally, and they're attacking us too every single day. And I think there's gonna be a crux to that, and it's gonna be a big ass war digitally that happens. We might not even know what's happened yet. That's gonna cause this shift from like. Yeah, we're not using dollars anymore. We're using this other thing. And it's just going to okay, be well, like so an those, overnight. Those, so those conversations are already happening. I mean, what's what's the guy's name with the C that we, that's talking about that just last week um, was talking about, you know, SDRs, uh, you know, based on based on based on crypto. Who? I mean, these these discussions are happening at the level of, of the IMF and the and and the central banks and whatever that they're talking about coming together and, and having a, you know, global sediment layer that's based, you know, that's a, that's a similar, that's a similar system and that the dollars, you know, the and, dollar's heyday is What I'm saying over, is that right? there are the, 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 the experiments that are happening right now, a good portion of them are trying to sell themselves to these people in these conversations as providing that now. And that's what I think is going to happen when, at least the first iteration of this that's probably going to fail is they're going to choose something that already exists because it is working as sold by the people who are making it correctly in the eyes of the people who want to make these decisions. They're not going to like come together and build something new. They're just going to basically be sold something that currently works. Well, oh, works I agree in quotation with you. here. But I think that that period is going to be short-lived. Probably, or I mean, it, I mean, don't get me wrong. Like, it's not like our money, our money system works, but it's built on a on a pile of napkins. If you want to use these these analogy, like it, yeah. it it gets the job done, but it sucks, and it allows for a lot of criminal activity and inefficiencies and things on and so forth. And that's probably what's going to happen again. Just a little less shitty than what it is yeah, now. Yeah, that's probably that's always been one of the arguments that bothers me most about about like you know it's been. 
Bitcoin has been accused of that it allows criminal activity. Actually, it's far, it's far, it allows far less criminal activity than our existing, yeah. you know, monetary systems. You know, and if it does happen, it's usually much, much more transparent. Yeah, at least you can track the crime. You know, <laughs> I mean, there is no. <laughs> Let's, You're not anonymous if you use Bitcoin. You know? <laughs> let's change the tone a little bit. I read something recently. It's like I think there's this the big Wall Street push to try and get Bitcoin in people's 401ks. Would you put Bitcoin in your 401k? Yeah, absolutely. That's probably a dumb question to this audience. Yeah, but... to, to the guy who runs the Bitcoin yeah. podcast. Yeah, I'd probably do that. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you guy that loves crypto. Would you put crypto in your 401k? <laughs> Yeah, so here's the whole thing, man. I, you know, I'm a Bitcoiner because I just love the sovereignty. Well, you're, I, I, just love, I, I just love the, I love the non-custodial aspect of it. And so, no, I wouldn't put Bitcoin in my 401k because I wouldn't trust a 401 fucking k. You're one that we call an advanced user. Oh no, let's, 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 I am advanced. such not an advanced user, man. This stuff twists my fucking mind. You know, I have a couple of simple wallets. You know, and I and I take care of my keys, and I just you know understand the fact that there's nobody between me and the other person that I want to uh, transact with. I don't really consider that to be an advanced user. Let's let's set the know? frame here because you're not an advanced user, but you've been around the space for a very long time for a very particular reason. You're one of the like the OG cypherpunks. You've been you've been a part of that group of people fighting for self sovereignty for a very long time, and. And that's the, I think that's the reason why you originally came to this space is because it allowed people to have something like that with money, which is a very powerful thing. And I I'm, just, I just, I, I've hated my bank, banks my whole life. Yeah. I, I, I always hated why? banks. I never trusted banks with money. I don't know. I'm Jewish. <laughs> <laughs> my, you know, and, and I, I say, I mean, that's kind of like humorous, but I mean, there's a certain, there's a certain sort of like, um, truth to 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 being a survivor and having that history of being a survivor and, and and having you know to carry your wealth around with you and it's not i mean you know my my, my mother's second generation uh immigrant to america my it was my my grandmother who who left odessa during the pogroms in 1885 or 1890 or whatever and my mother was born in america in 1909 but still as a as uh as a as a jew you grow up with that that sort of like you know, culture of, 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 of people or systems or governments being a threat to you. They, and you have that sort of, you know, mentality about protecting your wealth. So I don't know that it's necessarily a cypherpunk thing. It's also a, it's also a cultural thing in, in, in my case. Yeah. Self-sovereignty um, is, a, is, a, yeah, is a big self thing. Self-sovereignty also in my generation, I was born in 63 and how it is that we were raised in California. I mean, don't forget you know, a huge part of the internet and a huge part of all of this culture comes out of, you know, was birthed out of California culture, all the acid taking hippies and the, and the military industrial complex and whatever. Maybe I come from a very, very unique time and space where all this literature was getting written and, and we were discussing these things and, and, you know, the internet getting born and all that stuff. Um, so yeah, I mean, you know, sovereign sovereignty is, is, has less to do with me with 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 not being part of the state it has more to do with uh, for me with personal responsibility mm -hmm. and i just don't like you know giving up out my personal responsibility over my over my finances to a third party i just don't trust them because history shows that third parties always betray that trust whether they're governments or or or, or businesses or even business partners or even your wife you know so um, how did you do that before bitcoin you certainly didn't do it digitally that's for sure well, I've I've been living on uh, cash. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, so so right the years before, so from two thousand two to two thousand nine, I was living in Istanbul, and um, and you know, it's just totally normal to carry cash around. The whole economy is cash. You know, you just you just use cash. You know, mm. and if I mean, whether you keep it under your under your mattress or however it is that you do, you're managing your own cash. I always felt more comfortable managing my own cash than having it because every experience where it is that I needed to have like a chunk of money to do something, getting it out of a bank was just, you know, year on year, decade on decade, ever more of a problem, you know, you just, just got to well, pull that's your pants around and bend, and bend over and, 
you know, bend over and grab your ankles to get your money out of a fucking bank, you know, and year on year, it's gotten even worse. You we know? saw what happened with Greece. Greece. Exactly. You know, so, so pre Bitcoin, I, I was a cash guy, you know, and so an interesting story. When I came back to, to Austria from Istanbul and rented my first apartment, you know, it was three months deposit for the rent and, and, and three months, uh, 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 for the, for the realtor, you know, and it came to like three and a half grand. And so I met the I met the lawyer's office to sign the contract and 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 pay the deposit and pay the pay the uh, pay the realtor's fee and I put the three and a half thousand bucks down on the table and they all looked at it like it was fucking radioactive. They were like, "Can you uh, can you wire this?" And I'm like, "No, I, I don't have a bank account." And they're like, they didn't want to touch it. And I was like, "Look it, man, you guys want to rent the apartment? He wants his commission." There's three and a half thousand bucks on the table. Last I looked, it's euros. And last I looked, it was legal tender. You know, they didn't even want to touch it. And that was in 2009. Okay. <laughs> Let's not even talk about all of the, you know, all of the hoops that you have to jump through to, to touch your own money. I mean, it's just like, it's just the most simple, it's just the simplest fucking aspect of Bitcoin that is so cool. It's just like, it's mine, but there's a responsibility that goes along with that. And that's what I want to get back to is it's, so it's less about the, the cypherpunk ideals. It's more about a human ideal of saying, hey, people need to actually take more responsibility for their own actions. Yeah, you need to be responsible for yourself, and that's what I like about it. You know, I know we don't have the level of culture, level of education, level of socialization for people to understand these basic things. And maybe I'm just a lucky guy that got educated that way in school, but they seem pretty simple things. You know, it it, it forces you to take responsibility over your own actions, and I, that's the most inspiring thing to me about Bitcoin. Yeah, I mean that. I think you're speaking to generation though that that's not gonna it's not gonna be applicable. No, but, I disagree with that. But go ahead, keep going on here. With what I just said, yes. People aren't taking responsibility for their own shit. Why? Because they're being groomed not to. Okay, I can agree with that. I have to talk they're about be, that. <laughs> they're being groomed not to take responsibility of their own stuff. But that's what we're not doing. only financially, yeah. But that's the whole. That's the whole. That's the whole game. That's what we're building. That's that's yeah. why. That's why I exist in this space. I mean, this is why I sold everything and, and left academia to join here. There's to build something yeah, that helps. But that. What you guys are talking about is like trying to change the psyche of an entire swath of people that have been groomed to not take care of their own stuff why would not they understand okay. how right. let's so get you have this immovable you have this immovable object which is a 21 21 million coin cap and you have this immovable object of you need a public and a private key pair to be able to transact uh on this network yeah it's just immovable it forces you to learn you that, either that's, that's you cool either, you either learn or you don't but here's the thing know? what d is saying is that and I want to I want to ask you, you this why you think this why have they been groomed to to not do this D because it's just too easy to have somebody else take care of your shit okay why I'm gonna why be, is I'm gonna it be a four year old four year old toddler and keep asking why because I okay. I I, I know I what a, you're talking about okay. but I want if I have a bank account which I've been told since I was fourteen I've, I've had a bank account since I was fourteen. I don't even need to remember the password for that. I don't need to check my own transactions if I don't need to, because the bank's checking them for me. And if there's one that's foul, all I do is say, Hey bank, I happen to be looking at my ledger because that shit ain't <laughs> happening all the time. And I, I noticed this $75 transaction from Mexico. And guess what? I don't live there. So that's fake. And they're like, Oh yeah, it's crazy. We were probably going to catch it, but I'm glad you caught it. We're just going to get rid of that with a couple clicks. And it's gone, right? (laughs) Like, I don't have to pay attention to my life because other people are grooming me to not pay attention to it. You think other people are grooming you? You think other people are grooming you? Or the technology has groomed you? The technology has made it so. That's what I'm trying to get to. We have built the technology in such a way that the, the, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Emergent property is offloading responsibility to others. It's not, it's not, it wasn't intentional. None of this was intentional, in my opinion. It's just the way we built the technology and how it grew up. 
It's, it's a centralized technology in which you're forced to offload everything to the person who's taking care of it. That, that is, and because it's so influential to our lives, it's taken a socially emergent behavior of grooming us to expect other people to take care of shit. And so, I mean, those the roots of that go way, way, way right down to the to to, to like the archaic issue of notaries, like going somewhere and having somebody stamp and go, these two people were in this place, put these signatures there, and that proves that this this actually happened. And that's, that's that cool, but we have cryptography to handle that now. Hey, cri- exactly. Cri- but, but like, so I'm saying that the depth of teaching people, of grooming people to not take care of their own shit, is much goes far much further back than contemporary consumer banking technology. What I'm trying to say is that like we didn't know how to build stuff that didn't have that as a part of it. We never knew how to build technologies that allowed for people to take responsibility for their own shit in a usable way. I think that the only thing that changes that is time, Corey. Well, we do now. We have it now. Bitcoin was the first. Well, Bitcoin was a, one of the largest first instantiations of a technology that allows for that. Maybe you can say like uh, BitTorrent actually is, but like it's it allows us to Lime have wire. yeah. <laughs> it allowed us to Napster decentralize value and have digital scarcity, which then it's built in such a way in which you can you can actually build technologies that enable people to take responsibility and 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 for their self sovereignty if they want to and Again, now we can build we can rebuild I, all of this stuff i agree that so i'm what i'm saying that our target market is is institutions and existing systems and less the consumer i think that that's the failure in the bitcoin message is that is that uh, these things are there to you know be implemented what? I on agree. an institutional level i agree a million percent with what you just said like we targeted the wrong group of people when this whole started because the individual is not strong enough to cause yet. like momentum right, yeah coin but let's use let's use coinbase as an example right this is a vast Coin- majority oh, vast, ma- vast, ma- <laughs> vast majority of people are holding you know their their coins in in custodial solutions like coinbase whether it is because they're trading because they because they're greedy or because of the convenience most people do want custodians i agree with that yeah. so so the idea of like having bitcoin in a 401k you know, is 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 not necessarily a bad thing. I agree with with uh, with you, D, about about the average person just does not want to worry about this shit, and that's why I think that the play has to be institutional and has to be, and it has to be. Um, I mean, both in terms of business and in terms of of, of governance or jurisdiction, that these mm-hmm. things need to happen institutionally, so that those custodial solutions have a set of rules that are backed by cryptographic consensus rules and algorithms that the whole system is adhering to. That's my hope. Here's the beauty in in all of what you just said. We can build all of that. That can all exist. We've already built it. Yeah, but and I still have the option to opt out if I feel like I want to. So so I can't do that anywhere else. This is the argument that I make around identity, right? If you can't revoke your private key, it's not your identity. If you can't say this identity no longer exists on the state machine, because people are always talking about the identity solution, right? That's the big thing that we have to solve in the space. Yeah. If I can't revoke, if I, it's it's like the the argument, the right to be forgotten by Google that we've been having in Europe, right? If I can't revoke my identity, it's not my identity. Uh, yeah, but you still exist. You're attached to systems. You can sure, I, but I need to. I need to have the right to be able to determine which system, what systems perpetuate about me. Okay. Uh, good luck There's doing that be with Bitcoin. A system, though, there has to be a system that knows you. If you agree that something um, has value and you participate in it, and you and you hold value in the fact that the ledger can't be changed, and it's immutable in some sense, then you can't have that other. I don't think you can have that other... Well, from a certain point in time, I can say I'm no longer transacting under this identity. And Bitcoin allows yeah, me to, but... to essentially do that, right? You can create oh, a new yeah. wallet, a new, a, new, a new public private key pair. You can go through the hoops that you need to go through that from this point forward, you're transacting from that identity. Okay. Um, 
That's that's right. a, that's a reasonable thing to say. And I think as the cryptography that we use gets better, we actually will have ways in which you can actually redact um, certain things depending on the network you're in. Probably never never in Bitcoin. Um, well, I think it's really. I think that's some of the, the really exciting stuff that's happening in the space. That's happening in, in Ethereum. Yeah, and all the privacy stuff that's happening. You know, we're getting closer mm. to zk. We're getting close to zk snarks. I mean, at some point, we're going to have. At some point, we're going to have hardware hardware level, secure enclave, auditable um, verification. You know, I mean, we're doing all this in software, but the device manufacturers are going to. I mean, it's just such an obvious play that at some point, rubbing your microphone you know, across your zipper. Uh, that it's that it's that at some point you're going to have this stuff at the hardware and and, and the device level, and there's going to have to be some sort of regime about moving your uh, moving. You know your mm -hmm. transaction transactional identity across devices, and that again comes to custodial. Yeah. My point is, is that the technology that, that Bitcoin offers, yeah. So this sort of like, you know, irredeemable, so irrevocable state. We all agree that up at this point, this happened. Yeah, that that um, this is gonna this. It's like the paucity of Twitter with having 140 or 280 characters now. It forces a certain sort of a sort of a you know. An efficient communication, and so the the stuff that we're building eventually will lead to these things being implemented because they are just more efficient. Yeah, yeah. It's it's just a, it's just a certain sort of an inevitability. Um, it's just that the time frame for that to happen is you know decades, decades, decades for for these. You know, there's so many variables, and I mean, you know. <laughs> Nuclear, we're still, you know, I, one of the best things I like about people go, God, man, we're still fucking transferring, you know, nuclear launch codes on 3.5 inch floppy disks, you know, like that's so crazy. But actually, it comes back to this argument that we were, uh, or this discussion that you and I were having about st status being security by obscurity. There's a certain beauty to the fact that we're still moving launch codes around on three and a half inch floppy disks, you know? It works. <laughs> Right? Yeah. Well, yeah, nobody's so, trying to hack that shit. Ain't nobody got floppy disk drives. Yeah. <laughs> nobody has floppy disks. I mean, it's, yeah, it's, it's, we still have a very long way to go. And that's the thing that sucks is that while what's, what's, if you've been in this long enough and you've actually been enthusiastic about this space, you know there's a long way to go. But the thing that sucks is that the public doesn't see the long road. They only ever see price. They only ever well, care. The stories price. we're telling each other either, the marketing yeah. campaigns and the ways in which we try and get people attracted to our particular community so that it has uh, more value in it, and more, more eyes and more development is usually a narrative right now and not let's talk about this 10 years from now. Cause, yeah, my mm -hmm. argument though, though, is that, I mean, my argument is the cypherpunk argument is that the code overweighs anything that's said, over, overweights anything that's said about it. There it is. It's there. It's working for ten years. You know? Okay. Yeah. I guess. <laughs> like we can. We and we, it we will have the. To do so, you know. Yeah. We have. We have the. Bitcoin's narrative is based on its history, and it hasn't always had that history because it, you know that's that's the it's 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 it says we're so secure because we're ten years old, but it can say that because it's ten years old and no one else can. And but it was mathematically. It wasn't to be expected. always that way. Yeah, the code has always been what the code has been. But it didn't have the value in the early days because it was early and, unt and, un and untested and untrusted and unbattle scarred. Now it has gone through all of those things, and so you can say you can you can actually start to use that narrative. Yeah, so mm -hmm. I'm actually one of those OGs that didn't you know that didn't take it seriously at the beginning. I just went, okay, this is going to get co-opted and corrupted, and it's not going to work. Just like you know, just like mm -hmm. Liberty Dollars didn't, just like Eagle didn't. I mean, I was. You know, pretty skeptical about it. And there's a hard drive somewhere that I don't have a private key to with the, with the first coins that I that I mined with Bitcoin D. You know, <laughs> and, mm. and and I really didn't take it that seriously until, as I've said in many interviews before, until WikiLeaks got blockaded and we all started going, oh, okay, we need to get everybody to to understand Bitcoin so that they, they can send WikiLeaks some money because PayPal and Mastercard aren't letting us. It was really that point that the that the actual light went off in my head, you know. So, um, I may have been around the space from the beginning, but I wasn't, I also, I, it's not like the white paper came out and the code appeared in my local hacker space and I went, oh, this thing's going to work. 
you know? Yeah. I, I, mean, I, I was not one of those guys. Definitely. I was a skeptic. You know? That's everybody's first response. I think that's what why people get so bought in is because at first you look at it and you're like, what the fuck is this? It's a game? What is this? This is cute. And then you just overlook it. And then when it keeps going, then you're forced to investigate it again. And that's happening over and over and over again with Bitcoin. It's going to happen with every section of society. I think Wall Street finally picked up on it. It's like, oh, yeah, this isn't going anywhere. So we're going to need to try to make it fit into what we do. So I'd like and to then, circle. I'd like to circle back a little bit to where it is that we started in the in the in the conversation, and 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 say that. So, I, I, I like I said, I don't think that Bitcoin is going to be the the black hole, and, and that hyper Bitcoinization is going to suck everything into it. Um, I do think, however, that it will always be side by side. It's it has secured and will continue to secure its place to be an alternative to whatever else it is on offer, and that's pretty unique in human history. Is that we have a, tr- a you know a trans a trans border, a cross border store and transfer of value that has not been issued by a state that will exist as an alternative for people that want to transact there. So like and it's it looks- going to be as akin to digital gold. Like it's gold isn't used for everything, but it certainly exists and people use it. Yeah, I think, you know, it's a digital, digital store of value and it will be also a large settlement layer. How, what do you guys think about this $1 billion Bitcoin transaction that happened? Uh, you overpaid for it. <laughs> 700 bucks. Yeah, I was like, what? <laughs> Why'd you do that? No, I guess that was it was a lot of UTXOs. It was a lot of UTXOs that were bound together in one transaction. So it was it's not 600 bucks large. worth. <laughs> Seven. Yeah. Seven. It was a big uh, transaction, yeah. that's all. But yeah, no, I think that I think that Bitcoin will always be a, will be a non-state alternative to storing and transacting. I think it's secured that place and will continue. To so what so. are we going to do when Bitcoin becomes the state? That's the thing. What do you mean? I mean, we I love that we like to we love to think that things can exist outside of the state. And it's a very good place to be mentally, I guess. But it just ain't true. Like we always going to create governments for ourselves. That's an emergent like power of humans collectively agreeing to do things together. Okay, here's an interesting part to 100% that. 100% of the time, like it doesn't matter what it is. Like, this is what's okay, different. This is what's different about Bitcoin. Go ahead. Keep going. Let me keep going. Let's say we have a group of 2,000 people that are just trying to get running water to their 2,000 homes. What are they going to do? The first thing they're going to do is the five smart people are going to get together and they're going to say, we need a group of people to make sure everyone gets water every day. And let's just call it a fucking water group. And the water group is going to be the state actor of these 2,000 people to make sure they get running water every day. So we naturally centralize things to make them more efficient for ourselves. So as Bitcoin becomes more popular, and if there is this hyper-Bitcoinization, then we're going to elect people to assure that that process is working smoothly for millions of people. It's not just going to be this... This... I love you. I love you. I love your ghetto point of view, man. You like down there in the streets. You know how it is, right? Uh, there's always people that grasp for power and that centralize control of an asset or, or, or a commodity around them. Is your how do they do that for a for a permissionless consensus system? Anyone like how does that happen? I in, don't know, in a permissionless Done? consensus system, like that's <laughs> that's how people do shit. Like they're gonna make it work in a way that they can monitor and assure that everybody has access to so they co-opt They're mining take is that advantage it? of the ignorance of course cool. that's, that's cool how do you do that with bitcoin how does that I mean, happen trying right now well coinbase is a great start right? what's coinbase say? what's coinbase do? they just hold assets they can what it, is coinbase? It, dude coinbase has their own fucking blockchain that nobody even talks about the coinbase chain have you ever sent have you sent the transaction to coinbase lately from outside of coinbase it takes 30 minutes on average, and they split it up into three to six different transactions that are on some mystery chain, and then it goes into your Coinbase wallet. Like Coinbase is that, and that's why Coinbase has all this backing and is backing all these other things, and the state loves it because Coinbase is that. Cool. It's, it's not Bitcoin. It's what we're talking about. Huh? It's not Bitcoin. Yeah, I know. We know that's but not it is the cri- But it is but the guess who doesn't that know that's using. not Bitcoin? My highly educated, very successful father thinks it is Bitcoin. Okay. He's like, yeah, my Bitcoin your dad is old, and he also thought AOL was the internet for a while, hey, too, probably. Hey, 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 
No, he didn't. He never. Well, you're dead. You're dead. No, uh, you're dead. No ageism here, Corey. Man. <laughs> but what I'm getting on 57, man. What I'm Kick saying is ass. that like perception is reality, <laughs> and we've got to get away from the things that like, yeah, it's cool to be. Um, this chaos is cool. I don't know. It sounds like something that should be on a shirt, but in reality, things don't work that way for for everyone. And we're gonna. What we actually need to do is start empowering the coin bases to not do shitty shit because that's gonna happen. If it's not Coinbase, it's gonna be BitPay. If it's not BitPay, it's not. It's gonna be some new company. It's gonna be Gemini. People are going to go to the path of the least resistance. Oh, you're right. But they're built on a foundation that is much, much, much more difficult to co-opt. Those are but those are built off of Bitcoin and other currencies because they allow for them. On Bitcoin. Try co-opting Bitcoin. It's way harder. Why? Because it has decentralized trustless consensus. But and if it comes to a point where it needs to be co-opted. It will be. It will be. There's no way around it. If, it. if it comes to that point where like enough countries are using it for commerce, for their millions of people that are just trying to fucking eat street tacos every day, but they're trying to pay for those street tacos with Bitcoin, it will be ain't, co-opted. Ain't there will be a legion of doom that it is. Never, I will go out on a limb here and say it ain't never going to happen that Bitcoin is the only currency that people are using around the world to pay for their fucking street tacos, man, or their coffee. It ain't going to happen. I think it's They're, possible. I think it'll be a derivative. Well, here's of, the thing. If that is but, the case, so let's just let's get away from the technical technicalities of that. It's still the globe who's agreed to do this type of thing, which is probably better than so each sovereign nation trying to do it to their, in their own jurisdiction and then and then warring over who's who's winning for that isn't that kind of what we want like isn't that what we talked about just a little while ago is yeah, the, 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 the globe will come back together or come together and decide <laughs> on what a, a monetary policy is isn't that yeah. what you just said is a negative thing like what, what which one do we want are you talking to me both are of you we both um, just said that that's going to happen, and it's what we and that it's what we want. We think it's going to happen, and then you said it's going to happen. I mean, it's not what we want. It's bad. Do we want a global okay, money? So we, we need to we need to dissect this. Yeah, um, I think that uh, that we need to have a, a a global transactional layer for any individual or company to be able to transact with each with each other without. A trusted inter- intermediary, okay, and um, I think that that will happen on on various levels, mm-hmm. yeah, and and that will happen on different chains and on different systems. I think that we're going to be seeing multiple instantiations of this technology, and I don't see why there should be. I don't think that there should be one one ring to rule them all. I would say I, yes. I agree. Ninety percent. The ten percent, though, is that without a trusted intermediary, that that phrase I've been hearing it for seven years now. No, six years now. That is a unicorn, and unicorns don't exist. The trusted oh, intermediary I I mean, is I, the I, Bitcoin I, blockchain. I interact with, I interagree, I interact right? with a, uni, a unicorn. Takes my Bitcoin, you know, anywhere on the globe that I wanted to. You know, whenever it is that I need to do it. That's the trusted intermediary is the the Bitcoin blockchain, is the Ethereum blockchain. That's what people trust. But to get them to the point of trusting that is like, whew, that's, that's climbing a mighty big mountain. I mean, we invented the trusted intermediary for, for great reason. Like, that okay, I see great... what you mean there. Okay, so maybe that's a, that, that's a fair thing to claim. Yeah. That that is the only thing. It's it's that the human trustless. Trusted, yeah. It's, yeah. it's human trustless. We're not trusting a human to do yeah. these things. We're trusting a machine or a network of machines to do these things. The, I'll tell you what. This is, it's the subtle difference between I sent um, somebody needed to refute if I sent them money or not. So I sent them a transaction ID. The, this person A, this actually happened to me. Person A was into crypto and they were like, hey, man, I don't think I ever received that payment. And then I sent them the transaction ID and he was like, oh, yeah, cool. Got it. Person B wasn't into crypto, and I was paying them for a thing. 
And she said, hey, man, I never got that payment. And I sent them a transaction ID. And she said, what the fuck is this? And I was like, that's proof that I paid you. And she's like, well, where does it, what is this? I don't see this. Where does this show dollar sign went to my account? And I was like, oh, boy. Okay. That's the difference is she doesn't even trust this receipt that I'm sending her. Okay. So, but, yeah, that's that's, that's the not really a question of like, yeah, it's just a question of education. And, yeah, and, I mean, I and, thought you're gonna daily, and, and daily norms, you know. I think that Come I on, think that's story could have been better. On that one. Yeah. <laughs> huh? the other you said drop bank. on that one. <laughs> Say what, Corey? That story could have been better if person B was you sent them money in a bank, and then you tried to prove that you sent them money in a bank, because that's a way harder process than sending a transaction. Because either, like in both scenarios, you sent the correct form of receipt, yeah. which is um, a machine receipt that no human had any interaction with. Mm-hmm. But in in like the real dichotomy that I think you should have made is um, trusting people versus trusting machines, and which one is better. If I were to try and prove to someone that I sent them money in a bank, I take a picture of a, of a of a bank receipt, or I say go call the bank, and the bank can say whatever the hell they want, depending on whether or not they want that transaction to go through. Excuse me, that's true. And that's that's yeah. what we're trying to we're trying we're trying to build an infrastructure where we rely on machines that aren't co-opted by humans to provide proof that we've done something or like that's what we're putting our trust into because it's much more hard, harder to co-opt or take advantage of and so on and so forth. Not to say that it's impossible. It's just much more harder, much more hard, harder, whatever. You know what I mean? Hard. It's hard. It's hard. Oh yeah. Difficult. It's, we yeah. take more difficult. It's a very slow road for crypto, though. Ethereum, all the above. Ethereum is so far. Ethereum's trying to solve problems I don't even think have existed yet. Like that's well, why that's Ethereum. experimentation, right? Yes, yeah, so, yeah. solution, solution in search of a problem. Yeah. It's experimentation, yeah. and that's I think what's what's <laughs> Ethereum is an experiment. Yes, but what it's allowed for is drastic experimentation. It allows for. In, in individuals to then extreme extreme experimentation, experimentation to, to figure mm-hmm. out new rules of human coordination and then see how well they work for the groups that use them and with actually having a cost yeah, yeah? so it's so not just like modeling this is not just like a you know a model you know running on a computer somewhere it actually has a, a, a potential upside if it works and a mm-hmm. potential downside if it doesn't work that's what I find to be so interesting about it. So like all these script kitties that are writing all of these derivatives, you know, on Dai right now. I mean, those would have been guys that were that were either at universities writing papers and playing around with stuff or would have been, you know, working in Wall Street and having to fight up the chain for these derivative instruments to, like, get approved. And they're like, oh, I've got this idea, like Mar- Mariano Conti, you know. You know, did last last week after East Berlin, he you know he deployed his contract that allowed him to sell, uh, you know, votes for for voting on on MakerDAO. It's just like you know, a guy can just like go, hey, here's an experiment, and people either rally around it and see the value in it and, mm-hmm. and throw it into the casino or the market or not. And that process before it used to be like I said, either institutionally through universities and research or up through the management chain of Wall Street until whoever it is that's at the bank says, yeah, we're going to deploy this, this, uh, you know, this, this, you know, derivative of a derivative of a derivative. And having that op- happen op- in the open free market in an economy that boot- that Bitcoin bootstrapped is pretty fucking amazing. And that's why I don't understand why it is that all the Bitcoiners, you know, are so hostile to all the shit that's happening on Ethereum because it's an amazing you know, free market experiment, you know, here it is, there's out there, nobody can stop anybody from deploying code that, you know, makes some sort of like uh, some financial transaction or some deal or, or some bet, you know, on something that may or may not happen is a pretty fucking stellar thing out of, and, you know, Ethereum's worth, I mean, you know, if, if you participated in the, in the, in the pre-mine, for Ethereum, it basically all you had to do was 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 sign a transaction for your Bitcoin address, you know, to get in on the game. You know, I mean, it was Ethereum was bootstrapped by Bitcoin, yeah, and all the fiat poured in later. You know, it's a pretty it's a pretty cool child of Bitcoin, if you ask me. If you look at all the oh, thousands yeah. of people that are that are involved with playing around with it, you know, I, it's yeah. it's not like that anybody's solved really anything yet, but. <laughs> 
<laughs> at least we got a free playground where you can actually benefit from 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 the effort that you put into it and cash out financially if you want to. And I'm I'm excluding ICOs from that. Okay, the obvious. The obvious Those are experiments to, to make money. You know, on, on that was a whole chains. experimentation round. Well, one ICO is actually doing what they said they were going to do, and that's Celsius. They've Stats. been on our network quite a bit. Status. <laughs> um. I'm going to start cutting status and invoice now for every time you mention them. I'm going to send them an invoice. Um, I've been sending them invoices for over a year now. So <laughs> they're you're, say, just, you're just not getting paid for it. What is this guy? <laughs> oh, um, I love how the sh- truth comes out. You know, we should, um, <laughs> you taking it under the table? Yeah, because no, um, they employ me. <laughs> what I'm saying is like uh, Celsius. Like I hate to talk about it more just to give them that much more. But Celsius had an ICO and they're actually, um, they're actually getting pretty successful in doing what they said they were going to do, which is, um, I think is something that Salt was trying to do. Yeah, but as with, uh, with all experimentation, but, right? There's a bunch of things that try and only a few that actually kind of succeed. And that's what we saw. Like the normal, just like the normal world, right? Yeah. Except for before you had to get approval, you know, and get a license to be able to try your fucking idea that maybe breaks the system. And here it is. Basically, Bitcoin and Ethereum are dragging, are dra- literally dragging existing jurisdictional and legacy systems along behind them. They are struggling to keep up. We are already winning. Yeah. Right. I mean, yeah, crypt, crypto cypherpunks and cryptocurrency is already winning. Just the pace of the win is not fast enough for most people. And the pace of the exponential rise in the value of that, of that system that's increasing is, is not fast enough for people. But it's happening inexorably. As far as I can see, I'm, I'm pretty stunned at what's happened in 10 years. Like, wow, people are people are building. Uh, are building LLC DAOs, the LAO, you know, are integrating DAOs with LLC functionality and have jurisdictional approval in Delaware to do that. We're dragging, <laughs> we're literally dragging legacy yeah. legacy infrastructure along behind us. It's they're struggling to keep up, yeah. in a system that they can't turn off. It's it's phenomenally stunning to me. I think so that's your a answer is, yeah. Let's wrap. That's where we wrap. That's, that's a good time to wrap. That's a that's a perfect that's a perfect finish to this episode. We're, We're just either kicking and screaming into the future. <laughs> thanks, All thanks, right. Michael, for coming on the show. Uh, it's always always fun to play, talk with you. Yeah, All man. right, man. Appreciate it. Cool. I like having it's an open. Good, good to seat. see you again, D. Oh yeah, it's been it's been real. Um, so if you like this show, uh, wait, I got to do my YouTube spiel. Uh, please click subscribe and leave a comment and you know like don't at me, bro. Yeah. no um if at you me. like the show <laughs> listen to the other shows the bitcoin podcast is the flagship on the bitcoin podcast network we have dose of ether we have hashing it out which is uh quickly becoming a a fan favorite uh because of its unapologetic need to dive deep into these consensus algorithms and all of these other seven syllable words that you might not understand about the cryptocurrency space but Corey and colin uh don't hold anything back it's like a fucking office hours of crypto every week if you listen uh we have just the headers which is me and jesse just it's actually become quite sad we're so sad with crypto headlines lately because they're so oh, trash I thought, you guys, I thought you guys were reading email headers no, no. We read uh, headlines, crypto headlines, and they're headers, not headers. Headers good. isn't a ghetto word for for girls. No, it's not. It's okay. not. Yeah. Um. Yeah. It's uh, it's a play on headers, you know, like block headers, and then we read sure the headlines. Sure, it is. That's yeah. what the play is. <laughs> mm-hmm. And then um, we. Uh, we read the news and we try not to go on tangents, but we always do. So it's you kind of I don't even think you that. try to not go on tangents. I'm pretty sure you want to go on tangents. Well, in, in the last episode that hasn't aired yet, people will hopefully will hear it. We broke our headline database. <laughs> we broke it. So we didn't have any news. So, <laughs> so you, you got what you got. Too late now. You're hooked in it. Um, I thought you were the king of tangents, man. Oh, yeah. Um, 
what happened? Uh, what else do we have? Oh, Blocked by Design. Uh, they should have a new episode coming sometime the next five years. And no, I'm kidding. It'll, <laughs> I hope they, didn't, they don't hear that. Uh, they might. Who cares? They'll have a new <laughs> episode this, coming Is this soon. live, by the way? Yeah. Well, no, no, it's not live. We'll record it. Yeah, and I will not edit any of this out because I don't, I don't do that. Um, and then I'm not even going to edit out the bird. I might amplify the bird. Because it was really trying to just get some action. It takes us, takes us back to the original days when I was living in Brazil and I didn't uh, have a choice but to listen to birds because there's like a toucan a bird, sitting outside my window. Fucking bird orgy every time we record is like, what the hell's going on? Um, Dose of Ether is also a show. Dose of, Dose of Ether. Um, and the network is growing. We have news to share when it's more solid, but there's a lot happening. Uh, we're excited. To, to, to present to you guys as it keeps developing. So that's all we got. Go to the, go to the website, thebitcoinpodcast.com. Click on the donate button, give us some money, buy the book, join the Slack if you want to talk to us because that's where we are. Michael's yeah. in the Slack, I'm in the Slack, yeah. D's in the Slack, and about 600 other people or 700 yeah. other people are in the Slack talking about yeah, this stuff you, and other stuff. If you don't want to hang out with the Zerglings and r slash BTC, or the zealots and r slash Bitcoin, join the Slack. <laughs> Go to the bitcoinpodcast.com, push the Slack button, follow the three simple steps to get in there. If you can't follow those steps, then you... You should not be owning Bitcoin. You should not be owning Bitcoin. <laughs> Seriously, get out of the game. You Go need to buy stop. some gold. You need to go somewhere else. Yeah. Pick up a new hobby like gardening yeah. or something. This shit's way too dangerous for you. You can't follow hey, those hey, steps. Hey, come on, man. I'm a gardener. I am too. I am too. But it has not it doesn't have the same consequences as owning Bitcoin. Well, All right. Maybe if we have a post apocalyptic session. Shout out to uh Zoe Saldana, Zassi Beats. Uh play the outro.